All right. Welcome. Hello, everyone. So excited to be here. We've heard that there may be 200 some of you in the audience today, and it's certainly a pleasure to be back again for part two of our collaboration between Microsoft, we and Colorcom for reimagining comms with AI. Like I said, what a topic, right? It's definitely top of mind when we think of what's happening in our industry right now. Allow me to introduce myself or reintroduce myself if you were here last week. My name is Roseanne Aragon. I work at Microsoft Communications for Global AI Storytelling, and it's such an honor and a pleasure to be here in this collaboration. Again, just taking us back to last week, you know, such great energy. Thank you so much for your participation, your questions really was an engaging conversation about how AI is impacting several industries, how we're embracing that change, and really getting getting our foundations, getting thinking about, okay, how are we, you know, working to embrace this and, and not be afraid of it. Now we're on to part two. This is the workshop facilitation. We have two wonderful workshop leaders here today who I'm excited to introduce, and we're hoping that the purpose of this session, we're hoping you'll leave with uh, practical ways that you can embrace AI in your work. We can show you the different step-by-step -step methods on how to do a few things that we think would be particularly helpful for those in the audience today. All right, with that being said, I'd like to introduce our two workshop facilitators. We have Elaine Chang, Microsoft Chief Communications Officer's Technical Advisor, the very first one, I might add and Joe Mirabella, the Vice President of Digital Communications at WE. Wow, what a lineup. And I know they have such great programming ready for you today. They're gonna show you a lot. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat. Just know that at the end, we do have some dedicated time, about 10 minutes to focus on the question. So if we don't get to your question right then and there, don't worry, we'll have some time at the end as well and a little bit of a surprise. All right, so I, I think it'd be helpful to kind of set the context as to who we have in the room. And we're so excited to have you all here as well. So please know you are a part of this immersive experience. Um, I wanna start with Elaine. Elaine, I know you just have so much experience. I mean, I know that you worked in engineering, you, you work in comms, you worked in global communications, 17 plus years in, with experience in managing global teams, building products, and also your well-rounded expertise in engineering communications and business strategy as well. Today, we're obviously talking about AI. So I just would like to invite you to share a little bit about what you do with our audience and uh, what it's been like finding ways of incorporating AI into your work. Thank you. So as a technical advisor for Microsoft CCO, the way I think about it is I'm really working at the intersection of technology and the communication and storytelling. And then that's where, you know, extending the power of uh, storytelling uh, with the technical understanding of what this powerful technology is. And then the other way I think of it is, you know, I am a translation assistant and, and I'm a trusted ally for our team and our industry and our profession. And then we're navigating this all together. Yes, definitely. I know, you know, when we have very technical questions, Elaine has this superpower at being a comms professional, but also knowing the way that the tech works and being able to, to translate that in a way for us. So we certainly appreciate your experience. Thanks, Elaine. Uh, Joe, I want to turn over a question to you as well. I, so in your background, I just... I just love it. It really resonates with my soul. I can see you're a writer, a journalist, a communications leader for nonprofits. You did campaigns, strategic campaigns with social good companies. And really, audience, the list goes on. Um, it's very clear that you see technology as a way to create positive change in the community. So I'd like to ask you to share a little bit about what you do with the audience and what it's been like for you incorporating AI into your work. Yeah, happy to. Hello, everyone. Um, I, as she mentioned, I'm the VP of Executive Communications here at WE. So I work very closely with senior tech leaders and their teams, uh, primarily at Microsoft, but other uh, clients as well, um, in the digital space. And uh, the way we like to describe it here is that you know an executive has the opportunity to personify the brand. And so my team and I help um, executives use uh, digital platforms to tell stories about the company and also share, you know, what is passionate about them. 
Um, and, you know, as uh, a company that produces a lot, when AI came out, um, at first I was terrified because as a writer, I thought, uh oh, here, <laughs> here goes my job, maybe. But then I grew to learn that actually this is a creative partner that I can work with uh, and 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 help solve challenges, get the juices flowing, brainstorm, um, and and make things flow. So it's been been a fun thing to experiment with. And I'm sure you know as you do your work for good, you think of okay, what is this first of all, and then it becomes how can I use this as a tool to amplify the work that I do for my communities. And certainly at Microsoft, we we see it the same way that AI is a co-pilot. Um, with that, I want to you know throw a question to Elaine, and you know why is it important to remain curious? And I think you inspire this in all of our meetings at Microsoft. Why is it important to you know to really encourage curiosity and learning, and especially in this era of AI innovation? I'll share a story. Um, so I'm also a mom, master of messiness. You can actually see the two paintings <laughs> on my girls. Um, so the other day we were playing Lego sets together and then it was like this Lego friend and it has a tech shop and then my girl said, hey mom, come, come see, take a look at there's PC in it, there's tech in it, it has AI in it. I said, what AI? Well, they say, well, I know if I say AI, you're going to pay attention, <laughs> which is true, right? I'm paying attention. And this is just how AI has captured everyone's attention. Then I asked my girls, what do you mean by AI? And the little one said, A for amazing. The other one added, I for imagination. So to me, this is really AI as astonishing innovation for amazing imagination. I just love that. And I love how you included their, their those are their paintings, right? Yes. <laughs> their art in the back. Their amazing imagination. Yeah. It, such a sweet story. Thanks for sharing, Elaine. And, you know, I think about how we incorporate AI, not just in our work, but our personal lives. And it's really just like your children has inspired me to think differently and creatively and ask different questions and think, hmm, these are the way things have been done. But why does, does it have to be that way? Can we innovate our ways of thinking? Joe, I think this is the perfect question for you before we lead into the workshop portions that I know you both have prepared. Um, when it may be a little intimidating thinking of ways that you can try something new. It may be something maybe a little bit scary, maybe a little bit, you know, you get nervous thinking this is something different. What's your advice to those in the audience who may be a little nervous about trying something new like AI? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think the first thing to remember is that every we experiment all day long as communicators. We're always trying something new. Some of us are A-B testing headline headlines on a, a email and so my first, my best advice is to just try. And I, I do it both in my work and then even in social situations, especially when it first came out, I was bothering people at um, cocktail parties and, and things like this. And I ran into a Shakespearean actor and I said, hey, let's see if this can write, write something in iambic pentameter and tell me what you think. And sure enough, boom, it came out and he said, well, it is an iambic pentameter, but Shakespeare was better. <laughs> but, but at least, you know, we're trying and experimenting and and then, you, you know, use the human lens, of course, to make sure that it's exactly what you want. And that's what we'll talk about today. I love that iambic pentameter. Oh, goodness. It's been a while since I've heard that that phrase. Um, but but I think you're right, Joe. It's there, and I think we're learning as we're using AI that there are certain things that humans just do better. <laughs> and this is truly a tool. Okay, with that said, without further ado, I, you know, I know both of you have prepared um, a, a mini workshop for our audience. So, I, Joe, you'll go first. Elaine, you'll go second. Joe, take it away. Okay, happy to. One moment, pressing some buttons over here. And please, if you're in the audience, uh, feel free to put some questions in the chat. I'll certainly be monitoring and we can either address the question right there or bring it to the end uh, for our 10 minutes where we're able to you know, do question and answer, so. Okay. All good, everyone can see it okay? Yes, sir. Great. All right, well, thank you very much again for coming. We're gonna uh, take you through a journey of various ways you can use AI to in your work. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to run some um, examples for you. And then Elaine's going to show you a bit about the future. 
again, this is who we are and we're happy to be here. Very excited about it. I loved Elaine's story about uh, AI's imagination. And uh, so I used that fun side of the tool to create this slide, the image on the right. I actually asked uh, Bing image creator to imagine itself as my creative partner and what it would look like. And uh, I also added a, you know, in inspired it to use a cartoon if it wanted to. And it created this really fun, uh, optimistic, hopeful image, uh, which I find uh, being especially eager to please and wanting to help you. And, and this, I think, was a, a very uh, fun and, and, and good example of how that works. In the next section, I'm going to go over, you know, just some of the basics, because a lot of this, uh, there's a lot of vocabulary involved, and you may or may not have heard these terms before and what they mean. So I want to make sure we have a foundation, and then we'll get into some prompts and examples, as I discussed. But first, let me just share a couple of ideas of where we find that it add value already in um, our work. It's great for research, you know, looking into biographies, uh, backgrounds and companies, trends, um, you know, Bing is connected to the uh, internet when you use the uh, AI there, so it is able to produce real-time information. As I mentioned before in the introduction, I like to use it a lot for brainstorming. If I'm stuck on an idea or I just want to, you know, run some, you know, uh, a version of something I'm writing through it to see if it can do something better, maybe come up with some better languages, uh, uh, vocabulary, excuse me. Uh, it can do languages as well. Um, come up with some campaign ideas and, of course, Creation, like emails, uh, social posts, blogs, press releases, as I mentioned, poems and iambic pentameter. <laughs> if you really want to nerd out on it, you can do all of those things and a lot more. It's fun to just experiment and see where it can take you. So these things, these tools are based on uh, large language models. That's the term you've probably heard in the media. And really what it is, is just vast amounts of data. Two brilliant pieces of information I heard uh, recently um, and I liked um, uh, Reed Hoffman's description as sort of a reflection of all of humanity's creation, that it's it's part of our um, uh, of us in a way. It's 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 re, re reviewing what we are, what we've said, what we've written, what we've created, and using that to inspire its work. Um, that's 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 how it works in a in a very basic sense. But that's that's what the LLM is: just all the data in in one spot. To engage with any version of these uh, AI models, you create a prompt and a prompt is simply designing a question or a direction to help it create what you want, such as writing a joke, uh, cooking something for dinner. You can ask it to even create a cookbook, which I tried once. There are several things you wanna keep in mind when you're um, building a prompt. Uh, the first part is the perspective. So tell the AI how to imagine itself. Um, and like the image I showed you earlier, I asked the, the AI to imagine itself as my creative partner. For communications work, I often ask it, pretend you're a communications expert or you're a social media person or you're the CEO of a certain company. And then you uh, create the ask, what are the top issues and opportunities and technologies uh, executives need to be aware of relative to AI is the example here. You can also give it very specific examples about the challenge that you're trying to overcome or the um, strategy you're trying to deploy. And then get very specific about how you want it to be formatted. Do you want it to just be a sentence, a paragraph, um, an essay, a press release, et cetera. In this example, I'm, I've created this imaginary coffee shop in Seattle where I'm at, where it's always coffee time. And I've asked it to help us, us launch the company um, by writing a press release. And so I've already pre-populated the prompt so you can see, see how this works in real time. I've written my um, prompt in here telling it the, the background of the coffee shop and asked it to create a press release. In this case, it's single origin coffees roasted in house. And I wanted to include a quote from a founder named Linda Jackson, an imaginary person I've made up, and focus on her goal to create a space where all are welcome. And as you can see, as it's populating, that it has captured all of the instructions in my prompt. Um, it's creating a really wonderful uh, quote for the CEO or owner, um, Ms. Jackson and in, in included a, a potential address for me. If, if that were the case, if we had a real address, we could add it and suggested that we include 
our website, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera, now X, and um, you know the contact information. So really thorough, easy to do press release. Oops, excuse me. And now taking that same imaginary coffee shop, uh, imagining that we need to create an Instagram post to help promote it. So um, I am using Microsoft Designer in this case, which is a free to use uh, software um, online where you can give it um, specific prompts about how to create uh, uh, the type of post you want, what kind of content you want in there. So I included things about Seattle and coffee and making sure it was uh, welcoming to all. Then you can click through and see, you know, which one might work for you. Uh, and then if you want to, you can, you know, go find one and then customize that design even further to meet your your brand standards. At, at this point, um, the AI is at the very beginning. So if your company does have an established brand, it may not produce an exact replica of that brand, um, but you could get something that's close to look and feel. And, that, and then this is where the human is very important. We're not replacing designers here. We're giving them a jump start, and then they can come in with their magic. And I, by the way, I love designers, so we do not want to replace them. Dolly is part of uh, the chat GPT uh, ecosystem and it's also connected to uh, Bing chat and uh, it's free to use here, um, which is a nice benefit. So I've asked it to create a realistic image of diverse group of people enjoying coffee in Seattle. Maybe we would use this on a website or a social media post. Um, the thing about generate, I wanted to show you some examples of uh, how it generates people, because again, this is a, in some cases a work in progress. Sometimes it does a great job generating people. Sometimes some odd things may happen, like an extra arm or hand. So you really want to make sure that if you're going to use AI to generate people, you're taking a really close look at the details. In this case, I didn't see anything pop up. Um, but I do know that I wanted to add uh, just a little bit more to this just to make it friendlier. Uh, so I asked it to add a dog since I just got a dog, so they're all on my mind. Um, and here it is. It, AI seems to really enjoy making dogs for some reason. <laughs> and so, well, I don't know if it enjoys it, but it's very good at making dogs. It's a common request, perhaps. And so here are some of those examples of the dog. This one looks like it's ready to have a cup of coffee itself, which is kind of cute. Anyway, so you can really use um, this to, to bounce off uh, ideas. And if you don't wanna use AI generated people and you wanna use images of real people, which is a good thing to do, you could use this to inspire maybe a photo shoot and share with a creative agency and say, I wanted something that looks and feels like this. How can you help me pull it off? There's another free uh, image creator available through Adobe. They have a couple of different products. This one is a uh, letter generator, uh, which can help you create perhaps some branding or fun um, uh, uh, words, things you can use in your design. So in this case, again, staying in that coffee theme, if anybody wants a cup of coffee, I don't blame you by now. Um, I used uh, the word coffee and then asked it use, to use coffee beans uh, to create the letters. You can do anything your imagination desires here. You can uh, play with the background, choose different fonts. There's a lot of different um, options here. In this case, I wanted to make sure we had a, a white background. Um, I did so that it could be ready to go perhaps on a website or Instagram or another site. And then you can also change the letters up a little bit here and add more flair. So here's even more coffee uh, in this example. They uh, Adobe also has their own image creator similar to um, Dolly. And uh, I wanted to compare the two. And so I'm using a similar prompt here where we're creating a photorealistic image of a diverse group of people enjoying coffee in Seattle. And then in, in this example, you'll see you can change the style very easily. You could do this with your prompts as well in, um, in Dolly, but this one has uh, buttons that you can choose. So you don't really need to know what synth wave is. You can see what it looks like. So here comes a, uh, another version of that after doing some selections. And you can kind of see the people that it's created here. Um, in this case, the people are just a little bit off. You see some like teeth out of nowhere, some funny shape heads, um, 
So again, take a fine whenever whenever you're creating anything with AI, the the key here is that it's a partner, co-creative partner with you, but it isn't the it shouldn't be the final word. So it would take a it, perhaps anybody could see the challenge here, but even so, have a designer or somebody help you out if you can. So I wanted to take a real world example and show you a crisis calm strategy. And so I have been following the Delta Airlines story about their Sky Miles, Sky Miles uh, changes. And I apologize to anybody here who might be from Delta if this brings up some bad memories, but I did just see an update today in today's news that they've uh, adjusted their policy, which I think is really helpful for this example, actually. So in this case, I've asked it to pretend it's a crisis communications professional. I described the scenario about the um, the change in its rewards program that customers aren't happy and that they've launched a Twitter campaign directed at the CEO. All of those things happened in real world. And so I've asked it to create a strategy for dealing with a crisis communication situation. And if you've ever had the pleasure or pain of working a crisis calm situation, a lot of these things are going to be familiar to you. But if it's your first time around or it's, you know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, you know, you just need a gut check on what you should do. As you can see, the AI spit out a very quick and, and thorough plan to, to deal with this. I think I need to go back. Sorry. One moment. I had it. Right. Uh, yes. I, I love that tip, Joe, about making sure to check that the fingers, everything with, because AI is really a tool. And sometimes you'll see there'll be six fingers, seven fingers, something about fingers with AI. <laughs> so definitely need the human in the loop. Um, I also wanted to, I see some questions in the chat. We do have a list of resources that we shared last week that I think encompasses a lot of the questions that are, are being asked. So we'll, we'll, we will ask Colorcom to make sure to share that as well. So thank you so much for your questions there. Okay, wanna make sure we're getting to most here. Just keep them coming, I apologize. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the rehearsals in the world and I pressed the wrong button, but that's okay. Yeah. That's not Almost Technology there. is always a funny thing, isn't it? I mean, it you... <laughs> um, I do also wanted to point out a tip that that Joe had in his presentation that I thought was really good is that these prompts, you really, you know, mastering the art of the prompt is something that can really make your the what what AI produces a lot better for you. And I appreciated that he wrote, can you create a picture of a diverse group of people doing X, Y, or Z and add a dog. So you're really using and taking those elements to show what exactly you want to see. And I think that tip about being that specific will get you results that you're looking for. Joe, I don't want to take too much time here. Are you? Yep, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Thank you for your patience again. So um, in this in that last uh, example here, I've asked it to create some uh, tweets or social media posts about um, this scenario, like how, how should the company respond? Um, and as you can see, uh, the second bullet really raises uh, my eyebrows, you know, while we can't reverse the changes, we're committed to making this as smooth as possible. And in real life, they took a much better approach and listened, acknowledged they were listening, and made some changes. So that's something that, you know, again, a seasoned professional is going to want to, to do. And um, and we uh, we're we're needed. It's our it's our it's part of our our world. So that is my speech. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh my goodness. If that you really just broke it down step by step how we can use AI in our work. And you showed us how to do it. Um, I, I appreciate the step-by-step -step tips. Again, we're monitoring the chat here. Elaine, I know you have your segment now, so please feel free to take it away. I hope everyone really loved those practical examples. You know, as you can see, we really think about AI as a co-pilot and at, at Microsoft, that's kind of, very thoughtful. Think about how do we talk about this AI co-pilot to your everyday AI companion. And this has really helped us to remove the drudgery in our work, unblock our creativity, right? 
and then really boost our productivity and efficiency in our everyday work. And most importantly, what does that help us? Then we'll have more joy in our life. And I think that's most important. So next, I'm going to share a little bit of the best practices you know, we've learned uh, at Microsoft uh, in our journey of reinventing communication with AI. I will show you some practical resources. I've seen people asking questions in the, in the chat about what resources. I'm, I'm going to give you specific links. You can get these resources. Um, and also, you know, how do we think about this, right? So this is a memo that you know, our CCO, Frank Shaw, shared um, in March this year. Um, that actually a memo talk about how what are the traits uh, that we think are important to help us adapt the AI transformation. Um, so a few key things here, right? You know, communication as a profession has always been reinventing. We've been just like maybe using different tools, different tactics, but I think this is a good moment to really come to the core, to think about what is the core of what we do. Right. And then so that's kind of like, you know, we think there's three traits that are important to help us thrive in this age of AI. Curiosity, um, run out and a play with all of those tools. Right. Right. And then this diplomacy is even more important. And the third one is really the rapid and responsible experimentation. And the next, I'm going to show you a few examples of how we've been approaching the rapid and responsible experimentation. Let me first talk about a process. So this process, the journey of an earned media story may look familiar for you. You don't have to understand the specific details of you know, what's the little words, but in general, you can just see there's so many different steps. This is a Microsoft process. It may look a little bit different in your organization, but the gist of it, you know, in this journey of this moment of rapid changes, it is important to just pause and inspect our process to say, all of this process, does this all still make sense? And each of the steps, does it need to be existing? Can it be simplified? And then you can say, which one can be automated and applied with AI? And then so we have done a similar thing that we looked at our process and then said, you know, which step can we do automation? Which step can we apply AI? But my, most importantly, which steps are actually most important for human judgment? And that AI is really helping us to get more high quality data then you are able to do better judgment. You are able to do more creative work to make sure our story are most more engaging, to able to connect with more diverse audience, right? To really reach the outcome that we think are more impactful. So that's kind of from the process side. I think, you know, this way of inspecting our process is very important and valuable. And then next, I'm going to show you a few concrete examples of how AI technology has also helped us having more engaging experiences in our storytelling. So at Microsoft, we have our own um, um, storytelling site, which is called Source. So we have actually been experimenting AI technology on the site for a long time. For example, we apply this tech to speech technology. So you, when you come to the site to listen to a story, you can just listen to it, right? You know, instead of just reading by text, imagine us diversify the ways that you can consume a story and an article. And then this year, we've been experimenting with all the new generative AI technology, different ways, even in our social, right? In social, when we create a video, how can we add a little bit of the, the um, again, similar text to speech in the actually synthesized audio into the video. And then we also tried creative ways for event promotion, writing a poem using Bing uh, to help us you know, promote our event. And also uh, like the one an example of the Bing image creator that Joe has showed you, we've also has been experimenting using that um, in our site. And actually that's using that image creator to share uh, effective AI prompt. That's a source article that we have, the art and science of uh, prompting. And not only that, um, the other is actually in our workflow. This is an example about how we used Bing Image Creator for storyboard 
brainstorming, right? In a lot of this creative process, right? So this is a kind of a TikTok um, that, you know, we uh, created uh, this video about the Zoom. Um, and then in this kind of a discussion with the client, then we will be able to just using Bing Image Creator, quickly sketch the idea and then show our idea in that process, gain much more efficiency and the creativity. And then we've also been sharing gifts of practical resources of best practice with our community. So um, I think you will, will drop this link um, in the chat that um, in March, we already shared a bunch of starter prompts for communicators um, for the new AI powered BIM. But you can also use the same prompts um, in other places um, using ChatGPT or even BARD, like, you know, any other um, place that you can try. The prompt is not specific just for a particular tool, but we summarize based on our own um, kind of uh, experimentation, what are a few communication use cases that we think has been really helpful. So for example, media interview prep, right? You want to generate the anticipated question and even some answer, and then you can give a little bit more context to help you in that media interview research and prep. And then media coverage snapshot. This is kind of the flash report. Doesn't mean like you, you are going to just, you know, take this as is, but this is a very good way to get a quick snapshot. And then I will also give you another tip. If you're using the uh, AI powered Bing, we have three different modes, creative, balanced, and uh, uh, precise. If you're doing more snapshots, this kind of analysis that you want to more accurate, I'd really encourage you to using the more precise uh, mode. Right, but the, for the next use case, social media post inspiration, this is where creativity comes in, right? Then use the creative mode. So you can have more brainstorming, more inspiration that you are able to expand your own thinking, right? But you are still the one deciding what's the final draft. And the headline generation and FAQ generation is also what we've been seeing the value of it. Um, and then when you see in the article, we actually gave you specific example of the prompt, the text that you can try. Another tip I will give is, you know, there's also the value of multi-language. This is where I also see now this generation of AI is actually expanding, removing the barrier and actually giving this powerful, astonishing innovation to more people that can use. You can, it's not just for English, try your different language. Like I've been trying experimenting all in Mandarin, Chinese, and it has been working pretty well. And we have global communication team. So I've been working with our global employees, trying all the different global languages for their use. And then you will find delightful um, outcome and you will also learn a lot of things along the way. And then recently, you know, through um, Frank's LinkedIn, Frank Shaw's LinkedIn, you've seen that, you know, we also shared additional tips for communicators. So this is kind of the next level after you just go to bing.com, did all of those starter prompts. I want to also share the tip that, you know, it's not only just on the browser of the um, bing.com. If you're in the Edge browser in any of the article, you can have the Bing sidebar, the Bing at the top right button there, then it will be able to do something based on whatever article or PDF that you're working on. So we gave in this particular resource, we gave a few ways that you can use the sidebar to ask additional questions. And then that has been, also very helpful as well. One of the very um, common use cases that we've been using is always asking back and forth questions, right? So the, the advanced power here is like, it's not just one transaction question. You can ask, ask up to 30 turns um, with the BIM sidebar, right? So that way you will be, be able to say, well, you know, let's say at the beginning you get a summary but then you can ask additional question based on whatever you had, then you can continue to iterate. And then you can even say, okay, summarize this to a different languages, or how does this um, land with this particular audience? What about the other audience? You can just continue really iterate. Imagine how lively, you know, how targeted this can be relevant for your particular use case. And then this is this table actually answers one of the questions that I've seen um, in the chat as well, right? There's so many 
options of AI tools? You know, can you give some tips? You know, which one should I start? You know, I will tell you, you know, for free, the most powerful one, it's really being chat. Um, and I will tell you why, right? You know, you can of course use chat GPT. The free version, you will be able to use GPT 3.5. The paid version of chat GPT, then you can get the GPT-4, which is a more advanced version. But for Bing Chat, by default, free, it is the GPT-4 version. And also by default, the Bing Image Creator, we just released the most advanced one, Dolly 3, recently. So you're able to, for free, even using your personal account, you're able to experiment all of this. And then you've seen the screenshots um, from you know, what Joe shared, Bing Chat Enterprise. That's if your company is also using the Bing Chat Enterprise. By the way, that's free as well, but it is really adding that commercial data protection, right? So you are able to use your confidential um, data like you know, to play with, like, you know, at least it's not really um saved for other purposes, right? And then we, my team, just starting to use the Microsoft 365 Copilot. And then this is a, if you have additional data, uh, like the Word, you know, the Outlook emails and all the other stuff, then the magic can also apply on that. So next I'm going to show you a quick demo of what that scenario looks like. But what you're looking for is, look at this example and think about how much drudgery can be removed in this daily flow and how much productivity can be here and infused. Introducing Microsoft 365 Chat, a powerful new capability in Microsoft 365 to solve your most complex problems at work. Let's say you're a marketer at a national chain of home improvement stores and you need to get the latest on the store opening. You start your day with Copilot, asking what's hot in your inbox today. It does some thinking and gives you an overview of the most pressing items. Great. Looks like the new store opening plans could use your attention. Let's dive in deeper there. Copilot comes through all your recent emails, chats, documents, and meetings, whether you attended them or not, to get you up to speed in moments. It didn't just summarize a single document. It knew what sources to pull from and what information to extract from each. Next, you need to do some market research. Let's say you want details on square footage and the proximity of competitors to your new location. M365 Chat scours the web, and within seconds, it finds everything you're looking for. And it includes references, so you can easily fact check the results. You're curious, how does this stack up against the other stores you're opening in the past year? Copilot figures out which stores you mean, crunches the numbers, and gives you the answer. What about that, right? So you are able to just add one place. Imagine what you need to do today in order to crunch in the number and compare and reference all of the stuff. But it doesn't just stop there. I'm going to show you another demo about taking similar information, continue with this use case. Think about writing a blog. What about that after you write the blog, you want to think about the catchy headlines. What about after that, you want to make more modification? You just say, you just articulate what you want in the prompt and it will just do it for you. How does that look like? Let's see. Now that you've got the opening date, you've got to get customers excited. Time to write a blog post. You point Copilot to the right files and ask it to tune the message to the audience. Note the amount of detail such as asking it to pick the top five things and make them prominent. Here it goes. Copilot gets to work. Okay, now you've got a blog post. This store will be the first to unveil your new home improvement concierge service, and you need a catchy tagline. Let's generate some options. This is great for when you've got a case of writer's block. Here we go. These look pretty good. Lastly, you want to highlight the impressive retail experience of the new store manager. Best source for that? LinkedIn. Copilot generates an updated blog for you that includes the new additions. Now, the opening is just around the corner, and you've got to send an email to the team so they have everything they need to push this over the finish line. Now, one of the amazing things about Copilot 
is you don't need to worry about things like punctuation, spelling, or being super structured. You can give it a total brain dump. You could spend the next hour putting together an email that outlines the key details, but with Copilot, you're never more than a few seconds away from a solid first draft. There was a great quote in the store walkthrough video that you want to include, but you don't remember where you last saw it or have time to search for it, let alone rewatch it to find the quote. Based on your quick description, Copilot finds the exact video you're thinking of, extracts the quote you wanted, and plugs both the quote and the video into your email. Wow. Was that practical? Can I get some <laughs> applause? And this is not just, you know, demo. This is real code, right? And we are just really at the beginning of this journey. So in summary, what are some of my parting advice? What do we think we should do as communicators in this new era of AI? I hope all of this has served as inspirations to just get you started, but just feel compassion about where we are. We are at a change. So if you're feeling a little bit intimidated, it is normal, everyone is. But I also really encourage you to stay curious and continue to experiment and pioneer, get there, get out there and play, play. Think about play with the tools, right? Figure out what works, what doesn't. Because a lot of those tools, they're not perfect yet. They are not. And the you right now has an opportunity to co-create, give feedback and actually co-create with the product, you know, to really figure out what will work and what use case you wish you have seen. So think about where can you apply it to your daily work and in your uh, organization and be a pioneer in your own profession, right? In your own organization and in your industry and really operate with a sense of urgency. Don't be intimidated, learn and adapt and be open to the positive impact. Really think about co-pilot versus autopilot. And I think it's important here is say, oh, we think about the tool as co-pilot, but it's actually as human, how can we be less of the autopilot, right? We, as product makers, we are going to try to produce the product in a way to help. So sometimes we even think about producing um, the friction in the product. For example, when we come up with the draft using AI, we don't want you to just click right away. We want to make sure you human, us humans, we are going to review it. We are going to edit it. And then, you know, take all the other input that we have. And actually we are the command center to take the co-pilot and then we drive the outcome we want. And don't lose sight of your value. Cherish the art form of communication. Invite some science to your processes. This is very important. And I think this is also where I hope you feel this empowerment here. In the past, the technology is not as good yet, right? We were bending our ways to try to understand the computer language, try to say, how can we work with this you know, computer that's not very friendly with us? But this is the opportunity. Now, as communicators, your best ability to articulate, to communicate, you're the best one to be able to interact with this technology now. Now the technology is able to understand you. I actually want, want to tell all of us here, you don't have to be intimidated by the science. Right now, it's the science is actually the magic helping you. If you just focus on the art and what I mean, articulate, repeat, and tweak. Art, Articulate, repeat, and tweak. Focus on that art. You're going to find so much magic and productivity and creativity in your way. And the last one, cultural is really key because it's important for us to lead the change and be a champion for this next phase of communication with AI. And I encourage any audience that, you know, you can be the activator the change maker of the cultural transformation in your organization as well. 
And with that, I hope this session, you know, give you enough inspiration to continue in the journey. And we are still all here for you. Gosh, thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, we can certainly feel your energy and uh, just how enthusiastic you are about the work that you do as human beings. Um, I think uh, I'm seeing lots of you know hearts clapping in the chat, some great uh, comments, and we'll definitely get to the questions as well. You know, truly impressive, so intuitive. Wow, that was fascinating. Uh, the presentation is definitely spiking my curiosity. Thank you for putting this together. That's from Sarah, um, and you know I. And I encourage more questions in the chat as well. And so I hope, you know, Elaine and Joe, you know just how impactful your session was. Um, now we're getting into, you know, the open Q&A session. Um, I do see some questions about, you know, regulation, uh, all fair questions, um, as well as I, I, I know there was one that we got about security. And um, I also encourage you to look at the recording of the last ColorCom session, where we really dig into these conversations in depth with leaders in multiple industries, including a journalist as well, all storytellers, where we really dig in there. Um, I will say, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put out there that I, I think it's important, you know, and I speak for Microsoft, um, that the company it, that you are choosing to support really takes a responsible look at how they're developing their AI. And at Microsoft, very specifically, we have lots of resources being poured into the way we develop AI, which is our responsible AI um, team. And there's so much intentionality there. So I'll put that out there. OK, so I'm looking at the questions here. And we'll go over some and then we can, you know, throw uh, if you wanted to add as well to the conversation, Joe, Elaine, please let me know. Um, but let's start with this one. Um, we have a question here about lots of resources. So, yes, we will be sharing um, our resources it, and ColorCom will be sharing that out through their regular, the way their mechanism, how they usually do it. They'll share that out. This session will be recorded. So we'll also um, have you'll have this to reference. Um, okay, I, I'm i trying to, where are the examples? Okay, okay, so it looks like we're answering a lot of the questions up top. Most of them are a list of resources. That's great. Well, that's awesome. Okay, copy of the presentation. Okay, here's one. Um, you know, Chelsea asked a question about, you know, she has a background in communications with tech, um, you know, and her question is, would it be best to pursue a computer science degree? Um, maybe Joe or Elaine, you can talk You can talk about how you got to where you're at today, where you're doing this really exciting work. Um, I don't know, Elaine or Joe, if you wanted to kind of explain your track to where you're at today, maybe that can help Chelsea out. Yeah, I'll, I'll be brief and give Elaine uh, a chance too, because she's got a, we both have very different backgrounds. Um, I started my education as a creative writer at the University of Iowa and, and studied poetry and short story writing and tried all the different ways I could make money <laughs> doing that and mostly found my way into, um, you know, working in social good organizations because that's always been my passion is to, you know, help the help improve the world. And so I started in nonprofits and, and things like that. It was not a clear trajectory. Um, the nice thing about these AI tools, though, you don't necessarily need a computer science degree to, to use them. They're, they're designed for all of us. Uh, it's ha like having a conversation with a person. So we all have very different um, routes to where we ended up, um, but um, it, it's, it, there's not like a clear cut, straightforward way, I would say. Elaine, I'm sure, and Elaine's background is fascinating as well. Thank you, Joe. This question really, relevant to my heart because actually I'm a computer science degree <laughs> major. Um, so, um, and actually for those who are curious, uh, feel free to check out my LinkedIn um, newsletter, Master of Messiness, where I actually shared more detail uh, of some of my stories and, and insights as well. And specifically, even how I got to the current role, right? You know, I've been building products at Microsoft for over 16 years before this role. Um, and then, you know, I could continue with this, you know, much more conventional role. Um, but I will share with you a story, um, another story. <laughs> I was uh, at the point that I was just feeling 
there's so many diversity of areas I would love to explore. Um, and I, at that point, I've been working on the AI technology for a long time. I still love the technology side. But like, you know, when I saw this technical advisor for a CCO role, right, it just like felt fun. Like, you know, it just felt like I loved storytelling and technology, but it felt fun. But it felt like, you know, not conventional. Now I'm leaving my engineering teams, right? So the story was like, you know, I was having brunch with my daughter. And I was asking my daughter, if mommy could have any job in the world, what do you want mommy to be? And then my girl at that time was nine. She paused and she said, mommy, you should be a storyteller. I think you tell really good story to the little one. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. And that was the day right after I saw this posting. Mm -hmm. So that gave me courage. I'm like, oh. I will just try, you know? And then the last um, article I recently wrote um, was what I learned from the master of acting, Tony Leung, um, about the, the decision-making in career. And then the takeaway is follow with your heart. That's so true. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Great, thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you, Joe. Um, we have another question in the chat from Kelly, um, and, and she says, you know, breaking through the noise of folks leveraging AI to apply to jobs at light speed to actually connect with and be seen by recruiters has been nearly impossible. How do you recommend, um, and, and I'll paraphrase here, being able to show up and stand out? And I know a lot of this workshop here is really about encouraging people to learn AI and to and to get more familiar with it. So with that, you know, I would say um, it'd be worth it to look at the ways that you can get familiar with AI and add that to your list of things that you are comfortable with. Um, and I think, you know, our our panelists today are prepared to speak to, to that. Why, you know, using AI and welcoming it as a tool to explore maybe something that you, you that you may want to consider in your process. I don't know, Joe, Elaine, if you wanted to to add to that, how, you know, maybe it is about learning AI and, and being curious. It is. And, and also, um, I know people are using AI to reach out to recruiters and I've seen recruiters say, I can tell what an AI generated cover letter looks like, because I see so many cover letters and I reject those. So I wouldn't necessarily say that's an advantage. It's about, again, about co-creation. You need to put your personality forward in your heart and soul. But if you, again, we're all sort of at ground zero in these things. So if you play, have fun, experiment, and then share what you're learning also on your LinkedIn feed. So you keep that up to date and fresh and, you know, share your thought leadership on these things. You'll catch, you'll, you'll rise to the top compared to others. Yeah, I will add is really you know the two things one is what i said the art piece articulate what you want and repeat and tweak like even how you show up in linkedin or the other place how you talk engage with whoever you want just try that process you know um and then the other is actually coming back to your core who are you really the more we better understand ourselves, the more we show up authentically, the more likely you're going to bring your own energy, your own uniqueness that no AI, no any other human being will be able to replace you. There's no one version of you like there's out there. And even you, you have so many versions of you. You're continuing growing, innovating and changing, right? So I think, you know, just let not let ourselves be the way, stop ourselves. Just let the unique you just show up. That's what I will say. And we are all still, um, you know, in progress. None of us is perfect. And sometimes it's hard to show that imperfection. But that vulnerability is what can also draw people in. So I would just encourage all of us to continue to show what your superpower is and trust, trust people will see you. Wow, really inspirational words, Elaine. And you know, I think at the end of it, AI will and will always be a human story. And it's the humanity in us that makes us who we are. And that, you know, you just can't, 
that personal touch will always come uh, from, from human beings. So, oh gosh, uh, I wish we had all the time in the world. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, now we got four minutes left. Um, maybe Joe and Elaine, maybe each of you can just, you know, just a quick 30 second, um, your last um, piece of advice. And then maybe we can go after that into our little surprise at the end. So Joe, Elaine, Joe, go ahead. Yeah, I would say, again, th think of this as really um, a companion in some ways, this this uh, sidekick that's going to be able to help you get through not just your um, your communications challenges, but, you know, job hunting suggestions or, you know, other personal things you're going through. It's really a model, a, a reflection of us as humans. And and when we bring our humanity to it, uh, it will reflect that back. So don't be don't be afraid to experiment. Have fun. This can be very very fun. So play. This is about playing, and as you play, you'll learn. Elaine, yes, feel free to take so us to the end. Stay curious and play. And then, so my parting gift for you is on behalf of Microsoft, we communicate and call a calm. I hope we are empowered our audience to master the messiness and thriving communication. AI is a co-pilot and astonishing innovation for amazing imagination. So I asked Bing to create a poem for us. So the world is full of chaos and noise, but you have the power to make a choice, to master the messiness and thriving communications with creativity, courage, and collaboration. You're not alone in this journey. You have a community that supports you fully. Colacom, Microsoft, and We Communications are here to help you achieve your aspirations. AI is a co-pilot, an astonishing innovation for amazing imagination and inspiration. It can help you craft your stories and messages with data, insights, and best practices. But AI cannot replace your human touch, your passion, your voice, your vision, and such. You are the ones who can connect and engage with diverse audiences across platform and stages. So don't be afraid of the messiness around you. Embrace it, learn from it, and make it work for you. You have the skills and the tools and the motivation to master the messiness and thriving communications. Thank you all. Thank you both. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everyone in the audience. We hope you found this useful. What a beautiful poem. And we put Elaine's LinkedIn newsletter, Master the Messiness. I know that resonated with a lot in the chat. Thank you so much and goodbye.